inside JavaScript objects, understanding uh, the JavaScript objects and prototype and the new operator and how it works. So before I start, uh, let me actually warn you that I'm not a JavaScript expert. When I work with JavaScript, I usually end up in some roadblocks uh, with uh, the uh, different ways of uh, uh, works, the, the different way the JavaScript works. So I spent some time trying to understand uh, how it works, and I'm going to actually share my experiences with you today. So uh, the outline of the talk is going to be something like this. So uh, I'm going to talk about what's an object and what's a function, and uh, then we'll slowly m move on to prototype and understand how it works. Then we'll see the new operator, and then we'll try to actually implement the new operator and the instance of operator. And then uh, we'll try to see if we can implement uh, the classical inheritance like we see in other languages like Java or Ruby in uh, JavaScript. So when it's an object, it's a, it's a simple uh, hash map kind of thing. So you have uh, uh, an object called P. You are defining X and Y two properties. So they're called properties in the JavaScript world. So when you say A equal to P of X and B equal to P of Y, you can actually get those values there. And in fact, you can actually change these values uh, anytime. So you can actually assign new variables at new uh, properties at runtime. That's about objects. So that's that's a, uh, a simple way of uh, creating objects and using them. So let's actually look at functions. Functions are actually special type of objects. <coughs> they're also objects, but uh, they're callable. So if you look at here, this I've defined a square function. What it does is it computes, uh, it just computes square of a given number. Uh, the nice thing is you can actually these are just like any other objects. You can assign them to a different variable and then call it and do all those kind of things. And as I said before, they're like any other objects. You can actually add new attributes to it and then access them and do all those kind of things. So now, there is some magic thing called this, which we always get confused when you work with JavaScript. So let's actually try to see what it is. So the body of the JavaScript function, if you look at here, there's a function square. Inside the body of this function, it has access to two magic variables. It's this and uh, arguments. The value of this depends on how the function is called. When you call it as f, that this becomes a top level object. We'll see what a top level object is. But when it's called it as a dot f, this object, be this becomes uh, the a object. So what's a top level object? In JavaScript, there's always a top level object, which keeps all the global variables. When you define x equal to one, it's actually added as a property to the global object. So uh, when you're working in a browser context, uh, the global variable, uh, the, the top level object becomes the, the window object. Okay. But uh, there is uh, another way to call a function. You can actually say f dot apply, and then uh, pass arguments here. So calling f2 is same as uh, f dot apply, uh, null comma 2 as a list of arguments too. When you say a dot f, when you call a dot f, it's same as calling f dot apply a comma two. So what you're doing here is uh, apply takes two arguments. One is uh, what should what should be the this operate uh, this variable and what should be the arguments. <coughs> so whenever you are actually saying a dot f, it actually means uh, it internally uh, calls f dot apply with uh, uh, a as this. So let's actually look at one more example to see how it works. So I have written a slightly varied version of the square function that I've seen before. So what this does is it doesn't take any arguments, but it expects uh, this, whatever it gets, as uh, uh, to have a value, uh, value property. So here we have defined uh, n as value with value 2, and we have uh, defined uh, we have square n dot square 2, uh, the function that we have defined. So when you say n dot square, what happens? The function square gets called. What is square? It's a square new function that I've written. Since we're calling it as n dot something, the n becomes this object here. So it takes this dot value and then it executes it. Okay. So it, it's exactly the same as calling square me dot apply n and without any arguments. Okay. So uh, <coughs> it, uh, it's actually tricky, but if you look at another language, uh, other languages, when it's like Python or something, when you say n dot square, uh, <coughs> you can actually assign it to something else. You can actually say f equal to n dot square and then call it, but it doesn't work here because 
uh, it expects n to be here and before. Okay. So now look at the arguments variable. So that is the second argument that we pass to the apply function. So it is a simple example to demonstrate how, how we can use it. So there is a function count, it just uh, returns the argument, uh, argument at length. So you can just call count with 1 to 3 and it gives you 3. So now look at the new operator. So the new operator creates, so there is a different way of creating objects. In the first, in the first slide we have seen that uh, you can create an object by creating a dictionary uh, like uh, opera, uh, syntax in different curly brackets and say x1 and y2. But there is another way to create it that is using the new operator. So here I have defined a simple function called uh, point and I am creating a variable p which is using a new operator, new point 1, 3, 4. So what it does is a new operator actually creates an object internally and then passes it to, passes this to the function that we have defined. So when it is a new point, what it does is it creates an empty object and calls this function with uh, uh, the new object as this. So it is pretty straightforward. Now there is something more magic called uh, the prototype object. Okay. So if you see, uh, uh, the, each function has a special property called prototype. So and uh, whatever properties we add uh, to the prototype of the function will be available to the objects created through that function. For example, here uh, uh, the point P. Uh, it's created using the function point, so it can access the prototype, uh, the properties defined in the prototype. Here I defined name equal to point, and you can say call p dot uh, name, and that returns the same point. Okay, so it's like uh, it has a, a kind of pointer to that, and it actually uh, uh, reads from there and gives you back. Okay, but if you add a name property to p, it affects only p; it won't affect the prototype. Okay, this, this is actually uh, very important to notice. So, so the prototype uh, is only uh, accessed as read-only from the object. But when you modify, when you try to modify that property, a new property gets added to that object. But the prototype will continue to be the same. So, <coughs> it's typically used for uh, writing, uh, writing, fun adding methods. Say, so typically in the uh, classical class kind of things, you actually write methods, right? So here you have defined a method called magnitude, which takes, uh, it computes magnitude of that point. So uh, the prototype is typically used for adding uh, functions like this. <coughs> but uh, uh, so even the prototype is not something which is uh, any magic or something. So uh, uh, it's like any other object, you can change it to something else. And so it's an example to demonstrate that. So now here, uh, I've defined uh, uh, x as one in the prototype of f. Okay, so I've created uh, an object called f1, and f1 at x gives me one. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'm changing the prototype to some uh, new object where x is two. <coughs> so the the new object f2 actually gets uh, f of x as two. But what happens to f1 of x? Any any ideas? Will it be one or it will be two? No, it will be 1 because uh, it points to the prototype at the time of object creation. Okay, Once the object is created, you are changing the prototype of f, but uh, the old uh, object still points to the old one. Okay. So uh, to understand this better, some JavaScript engines actually let you access the prototype. So when you say p, p actually has a link to the function prototype, right? So uh, some JavaScript engines actually let you access that uh, prototype of an object that is called with a special uh, property called underscore underscore proto. So if you look at P and uh, check if it is the same as prototype, yes it is the same as the, for the points prototype. Okay. Uh, when I say some JavaScript engine, uh, I, I would say all JavaScript engines expert one. So you know which one does not support it, right? So it is even possible to change the prototype object. So you can actually change it 
to something else and you actually get f dot name as four. So let's actually try to see how actually this uh, looks like. When you create two new objects uh, with using the point uh, function, so when you say p1 is uh, point new point one comma two, it sets x comma y and the prototype points to the prototype of the function. So actually, uh, uh, there is a slight confusion here for the lack of words. Uh, we're calling this thing as function prototype and calling this as object prototype. Okay. So here, uh, so I'm, I'm really calling underscore underscore proto and prototype both as the same name just for the lack of uh, better term. Uh, so uh, when you say function prototype, that's the function dot prototype. When you say object prototype, it's dot underscore underscore proto. So uh, whenever you access uh, a property, it first looks up in the object. When it's not found here, it actually goes back to underscore underscore proto and then tries to find it here. So when you say name, you get the name as point. But when you define a new name, a new, ob new uh, name property gets added here. So it won't even go and look in the prototype. So now let's actually see if we can uh, implement uh, the new operator ourselves. Right? So we have seen uh, in the previous slides that all the new operator does is it takes, uh, it creates a new object and calls the function with uh, the new object as this. Right? So let's actually see if we can implement that. It's not really too hard. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, uh, this only works with in the Java's companies where underscore underscore proto is supported. But it's just for uh, uh, trying to understand how the new operator works really, not really for uh, any real use. Oops. Okay. So, like I said, uh, what it does is it first creates an empty object, and then uh, it sets the prototype, and then calls the function with uh, that object as uh, this argument. That's all. Okay. If, let's actually see what it's doing. So first, it's creating an empty object. And then it's linking it to the prototype and then calling the constructor. Constructor is that function. Then the function is assigning x and y. Right? So uh, it's uh, the function, the point function is saying this dot x equal to 1 and this dot y equal to 2. So that's how it happens. So there are three different steps that we're doing. Creating an empty object, linking the prototype, and then calling the constructor. That's all it does. So it's not, it's not too difficult, right? So you can actually see uh, it's pretty straightforward. It just creates an object, links the prototype, and uh, Calls a constructor. <clears throat> now, uh, the prototype can be can actually be tricky. So we have only seen uh, have, we have a one object and that has a prototype. Okay, what if the prototype itself has one more link to its prototype, right? So it could it could actually be chained. So let's actually see that uh, with an example. So I have defined uh, two functions f and g. And what I did is. Uh, uh, I made the prototype of f as instance of g. Okay, right? So what happens is, uh, when you create an object f, it has a property called f. If you create an object of g, it has a property g. And uh, g's prototype has property h. Now I have uh, changed the prototype of f and created a new f object here. What will happen when I say x dot h? It will be h. Yes. Uh, but how does it work? Yeah, so if you see that, x is an instance of f, so it points to f's prototype. Okay, f prototype is actually an instance of g, so it actually points to the g's prototype. So it's actually chained like a uh, linked list. So when you say x dot f, it looks up here and then uh, says it's f. When you say x dot g, it's not found, so it, it, goes, it, it goes through the prototype chain and uh, finds it here. And returns this value. When you, uh, it still it's not found. It, it still goes the next level in the prototype chain. It goes up here and then finds it here and then returns that value. Still, if it doesn't find it, you go here and then tries to find uh, the next value there. So this prototype can be chained. So does it look like some kind of inheritance? Yes. So this is a technique that we can use to implement uh, inheritance, uh, the the classical way of inheritance we see in other languages. So now actually let's try to understand uh, the instance of operator. We have been seeing that, uh, uh, we have been, we've seen in one of the examples that uh, when you say new 
uh, create an object, you can actually check that object as instance of that function or not. So, uh, according to the modular docs, it says the instance of operator tests whether that object uh, has its prototype, in any of its. Uh, so, so, when you call instance of, you give a object and it gives a uh, function. So, what it does is it takes the prototype of that function and sees that and tries to check if uh, that prototype is there anywhere in its prototype chain. So, in simple words, it just checks if object is instance of that function in any of these levels. Okay. So, if you see here, uh, P is instance of point, but it is also instance of object. Okay. So, if you look at uh, the previous example, uh, uh, here uh, if you have two, is two functions f and g, when say f is instance of f, it will be true, but it won't be instance of g. But when you change the instance of, when you say, when you make this prototype same, both becomes true. Why? Because all this is doing is, it is taking the function we are giving here, it is taking function and its prototype. And then checking if this function, this object prototype chain has uh, it or not. Okay. So now, let's actually try to implement the instance of operator itself. Okay. That's even that is not too hard. Okay. So like what, uh, like I said before, what the instance of operator is doing is it is uh, trying to find. So it's taking a function uh, object and a constructor. That's a function. What it does is. Uh, it takes a function's prototype object and sees that if that is contained anywhere in the object's prototype chain. So, uh, forget the first condition, but look at what it's doing. So, it, what it tries to do is it first checks if the object prototype is same as the function's prototype. Okay. If not, it actually recursively goes back to its parent. Okay. And it stops when it reaches the object. Okay. So, uh, uh, if you look at uh, the previous uh, yeah, the slide, when you say x instance of f, it checks x dot uh, prototype is same as f dot prototype. It's true. It returns true. But when you check if x instance of g, what it does is it checks this, this fails. So, uh, it, it repeats with uh, this. So, then... Uh, it changes this object, so uh, <coughs> then it starts checking here. So this is true. <coughs> so if you actually, so is it goes on like that until it reaches uh, the object prototype. So that's that's it. So uh, yeah, so <coughs> it's, a, it's a very simple function. It first checks uh, the prototype at the current level and then uh, tries the same recursively at the next level. Now, there is this, I mean, we thought we got the instance of correctly, but uh, there is a, a slight deviation from uh, the standard behavior <coughs> for the primitive types. So, uh, when I actually check if one instance of number says true, if one instance of object it returns true, but uh, when I say one instance of number, and so when I call it with my function, it returns true, but when I actually use the instance of operator, it says false. Do you know why? So, JavaScript has uh, some special uh, behavior for the primitive objects. So, this, these primitive objects are not really uh, objects in, uh, in the sense that I have talked before. But whenever you are actually trying to use them in a way like an object, it converts them into the corresponding object and uses that. Okay. So, I am actually, sorry? It gets as a variable. No, uh, it's not. Even if you access x equal 1 and instance of number, it still fails. Let me actually show you that. So, false. Okay. So, what happens is, uh, x is just a, a plain basic type. Okay. But whenever you actually want to say x dot foo or something, it converts it into a number object. And then applies this, uh, and then uh, uh, executes this operation. Okay, when it's x dot foo, it says undefined, but you can't say one dot foo. Okay, so when it's x dot foo, what it does is it converts one into number one, 
a number object one and then uh, change that. Let's actually see. Uh, I've added x of foo equal to foo. Okay. So what happens when say x dot foo? What do you expect? What do you expect now? No, it's undefined. Okay. So what it does is, when say x dot foo, uh, it creates a new co object uh, with the same value, and then does this operation, and then the object gets lost. Okay, this is called auto boxing. If you if, if you use that term in Java, or so when you try to add, in Java when you try to add an integer to a list, it cannot sit to an integer object, right? Or, and when you try to say uh, take the object and say plus one, it converts it to basic integer again. So it does something like that here. Okay. So what's happening was, in our case, in our implementation, we're actually trying to call objects dot underscore underscore proto. So when you try to access a attribute, access a property. It actually converts it into the corresponding type and takes its prototype. But uh, the built-in implementation is smart enough to handle that. Okay. So uh, this this difference between the primitive types and uh, the regular types uh, might get into this kind of confusions. It's it's uh, good to know the differences. Okay. So now uh, we have really implemented the new operator and the instance of operator. Sorry. Yeah. It's not possible because uh, when I'm saying, uh, I mean, I can actually add a special check, see if it's an integer. It's it's, it's not really possible, I guess. I mean, I can f write a function to check if it's a basic type or not. Okay, I can do that by uh, doing this. I mean, assign something to it and then see if it's not. Okay, but uh, I don't know if it's possible to do that. So even if you actually uh, take a string and add an attribute to it, I mean. Uh, I think the attributes you can add to string probably, but uh, so the, the instance of so there is this difference between the basic types and the primitive types. So you can actually uh, uh, explore by trying different examples. Yeah. So now uh, we have implemented a new operator and the instance of operator. Now actually, we'll, let's try to see if we can implement uh, the classic uh, classes and class type uh, uh, inheritance like we see in languages like Java and Ruby. So here is what we want. I want a simple way to create a class. Okay, JavaScript has no concept of classes. All it has is uh, objects and prototypes. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take that and then uh, convert that into something that we know uh, and we are more comfortable with. Not that that's a good idea or something, but uh, that will uh, give us more insights about the language. So here is what we want to achieve. So I should be able to define a class like this. Say class and then uh, give all the uh, Functions or methods uh, what, uh, that you want to define. So and say a equal to new animal, and then I say a dot eat, and this function should get called. This is like the way we define classes in Java. Okay, not just that. We want a way to extend this. Okay, I want to extend this class by. So once I have a base class, I want to extend and create a new class from it. So what I want to do is when say bird equal to animal dot extend and define the new functions here. Okay. So when I say uh, b dot fly, this function gets called. When I say b dot eat, the previous function defined in animal class should get called. Okay. So how to do this? Okay. Let's actually start with the basic thing. Okay. So uh, sorry. Any questions? Okay. So uh, this first attempt, it's not really the complete solution. It doesn't support the inheritance yet, but let's see what it's doing. Uh, so what it does is it takes it creates a new function. What the function does is it calls a constructor. The constructor we're calling with the name init. And it sets its prototype to the members we have passed. Okay. Let's actually see uh, in an example what happens. So when you create a class like this, what happens is uh, the animal, the prototype uh, becomes uh, the, the members that we have passed as argument to this. That same function f that we have calling in locally. Okay, so it's called locally f, and that gets assigned to a variable animal here. But what happens when you actually uh, create an object? So what it does is it takes uh, animal prototype and then assigns it as its underscore underscore proto, right? So, and then uh, uh, the constructor is uh, adding a new property called this uh, property called name that's that's that will be dog. So this is how the object gets created. Okay, now we have a classic like 
uh, a classical way of class, which still doesn't support inheritance, but you can create new objects. No, actually, let's actually go uh, one more level and then see if you can implement the the inheritance what we see in other languages. Okay, so that's a bit tricky. So let's actually borrow some ideas before we go further. Okay, uh, so this is uh, the, an idea from Douglas Crockford. Do you know who is Douglas Crockford? He's a, a he in, uh, uh, created JSON, the JavaScript object notation. So uh, he's actually uh, uh, proposed a small function called object. What it does is, uh, it, it basically creates a chain. When you say an object O, it creates a new object with O, o in its prototype. Okay, let's see how, how that works. When you say Y equal to object X, it creates Y with a transcode and score proto in X, pointing to X. Okay, when you say Z equal to object Y, uh, y becomes so Z underscore underscore proto. So it actually makes this chain. All right. So this is what we really need to support this kind of inheritance. Let's go back and look at the function again. So what is it doing is it's taking a function f and then setting its prototype. Okay. When you create a new object, its underscore underscore proto will be assigned to will be uh, set to its function's prototype. Okay. So this this even works. Uh, in the JavaScript engines where underscore underscore proto is not supported. You could have just said uh, O dot underscore underscore proto equal to, I mean, the new object dot underscore underscore proto equal to O, but that doesn't work in all the browsers. But this thing, this implementation works in all browsers. Okay. But with this tool now, we can actually implement uh, uh, the, the inheritance pattern. So let's, uh, this is the second attempt. Okay. So what we are doing here is, we are adding a function extend, so other parts are exactly the same, okay. But uh, what extend does is, it makes a, it makes a uh, new object which is pointing to the f's prototype and then copying all the methods here. Let's actually see uh, that by an example. So when you say animal.extend word, what happens is, uh, it creates a new object and um, uh, such that the transcondscript proto points to animal prototype and then copies all these functions here. Okay. Now, when you create a new bird object, the bird object points to the bird's prototype and that in turn is pointing to the uh, animal prototype. So, uh, with that object uh, tool, we are able to construct these chains and using that chains, now we have the inheritance pattern. So, when you say, <coughs> B dot eat or something, it, it comes here, it, it's not found here, so it traverses to its parent and then finds it here. That's it. So we have found, we have uh, implemented uh, a classical style inheritance in JavaScript. So that's all. So if you want to learn more, you can actually, there's some resources where you can uh, go and look at them. So, <clears throat> and that's it. So let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. Which slide? The classical unit tanks, this one? This one or previous one? Okay. So, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm creating an object here. So the new object has a link to the original product. So, so F is a base class here. We're trying to create an extended class. So I'm creating a, new, a, uh, the, a variable called new members, which has uh, a link to the base class prototype. And I'm making uh, this as uh, its prototype. Okay. Yeah. Uh, say again. Uh, I didn't get what do you mean by redefining an object? And can you please repeat the question? I, I couldn't get it. Uh, okay. 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 So what happens? So the question is, uh, let's say I define an object 
uh, a very uh, with a assigned to a variable and then if you change it to some other object what happens to the previous object yeah that gets garbage collected that gets thrown away Yeah, that depends on uh, uh, where you are running it. If you are running it in a browser, that becomes the window object. If you are running it in an independent JavaScript uh, environment like what I have shown uh, here, so it has an object global. So here x equals 1, I can actually say this dot x. That is that's still be 1. Sorry? This. Uh, that is just an object. It does not really... Uh, oh, this is a... Uh, modular JavaScript engine. So, I mean, there are different mo mo JavaScript engines that you can use. One is the modular thing, other is uh, the V8 engine from Google. Okay, so when you install V8 or the modular JavaScript engine, I think it's called Spider Monkey or something. Yeah. Yeah. Back. Sorry? We discussed Okay, fine. Oh, in, in the first beginning examples. Yeah, this one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you are saying. Uh, so uh, how uh, how is this becoming true in this case after changing that? Uh, uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. No, actually, this is uh, perfectly right. Okay. So what it's doing is. Uh, maybe I should have actually uh, put that picture like the other ones, but uh, <coughs> so when you say f instance of a constructor, okay, what it what does is it, it takes constructor dot prototype, okay, and then checks it, okay. So now it's really not; it doesn't really pass f here. All it you really uses f dot constructor, f dot prototype. Sorry, okay. When you say f instance of capital F. It takes capital F dot prototype and then uh, compares it against. Okay. So when I'm passing G, what it's doing is it's taking G dot prototype, which is same as F dot prototype, right? So. It's not inheritance. Oh yeah. So it's not inheritance. It's just that uh, I'm trying to say it's, it really doesn't look at the function, what function it is. It only looks at function's prototype. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Then what happens is, uh, this it will, both of them will return false because the F is uh, uh, created before the change was made. Okay. So it points to a new prototype objects. The underscore underscore points to the old one. So both returns false. But if you get a new object, then it returns true. Okay. 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 Uh, I didn't get so. Uh, what's what's one of of new operator? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, which one? Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 So the question is: uh, Is defining objects with 
uh, private variables inside the closure is a good idea. Uh, I think it's a good idea, but uh, I mean that's a data that's a near, that's a data encapsulation, right? So you actually you don't want to expose some of these private implementation details, so you put them inside that. I think that's a good idea. I think most of Java query jQuery implementation works that way. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm not really an expert. Thank you.